Welcome to this series of videos about functional programming in Kotlin using Arrow. On this video, we will talk about the functor type class. Whenever you find yourself in a situation where you have to map your data or transform any data, you will want to use the functor. The functor is provided on the Arrow type classes artifact. Just add it to your build.gradle configuration file and you'll be good to go. Functor is defined as a type class. In pure functional programming, type classes define behaviors. We'll know about which behavior is encoded in the functor in upcoming slides. Other very well-known type classes are applicative and monad, and this is how they are related to each other. We'll talk about those in other Arrow videos. Functor is parametric over a generic type f. Here, f stands for a data type or what we also call a type constructor. Thanks to this, we can declare generic functions encoded on top of the behaviors provided by functor and forget all about the concrete data types used for f. This is called ad hoc polymorphism, and that's how type classes allow us to encode completely generic and polymorphic programs that can work over many different data types. The most important behavior provided by functor is the map function. With map, we can map over the computational context of the type constructor f. This just means that you'll pass a mapping function that can operate over the wrapped value inside the type constructor, and then return the already mapped value wrapped again inside of the same context, f. So you're basically providing a mapping function for the f type. We previously said that the functor can work over any type constructor f. The truth is that f must be a data type that's able to provide an instance of functor for it. Some examples would be option, try, list, io, and many more. The ability to write polymorphic programs working over any data type is the most important thing to learn about type classes. Here you have an example. We can write a program in a completely abstract way working over any instance of functor for the type f, so the functor behavior will be used to map over the inner value of it. Here, we are just adding one to that value, or incrementing it, and then we are returning the already mapped value wrapped again into the same computational context, f. So after having the abstract declaration, we can make it concrete afterwards. On this example, we are fixing the abstract behavior for two different data types option and try. The moment you make your program concrete and fix it to a given type is basically when you are providing the implementation details, so you'll do it when you finally want to run your program. Any point in time before that your program will be completely abstract, and you'll be highly interested in keeping it that way for as long as possible. After understanding polymorphic programs, we can also read some simple examples on how map works over different data types. Here you have a simple mapping we are doing over an optional value. We can do it because option is able to provide an instance of functor for it. Note that types that are able to provide a functor instance already provide the functor syntax activated over them. That's why we can call map over the optional value without using an explicit instance of functor. Arrow provides this feature for you under the hood. There are many cases where mapping over some of the implementations of a given data type do not make much sense. One good example of this would be the option data type, which is defined as a sealed class with a couple of implementations, none and some. Given that option just contains a value when it's a sum, that's the only case we would need to be able to map over. That's why we say that option is biased toward the sum case. As you can see on this snippet, we can call the increment method for both implementations, sum and none. The difference is that it will only work when it's a sum. Whenever we try to map over a none, we'll get a none as a result. So if we look at option none as a way to express an error representing the absence of a value, any mapping computations built over it will be short-circuiting the error and keep returning none. Another good example of bias can be try. Try wraps a computation that might throw exceptions, like an access to an external API. Try is also declared as a sealed class with two different implementations, success and failure. 
reflecting the two possible scenarios returned by a potentially failing computation. Try is biased toward its success implementation. Right after making our program concrete and fixing it to try, we call increment over it. This time we are gonna use an explicit functor instance for try, just as an example. Since the program is valid, it will succeed and will get the value correctly mapped and wrapped into the same context. On the other hand, when the operation turns out to be a failure, any computations over it will keep returning failure. Another behavior provided by functor is the lift combinator. Lift is able to lift a function to the functor context. So you pass a function from A to B, and lift will return a function from F of A to F of B. You can store that lifted function into a variable and use it later on. Once you have a function lifted to the given context, you can apply it over any values wrapped over the same context, like we are doing here. We have chosen option here as the F context. Whenever we think about tight classes, we assume they need to satisfy some mathematical laws in order to be considered a tight class. Those laws are coded and enforced by tests inside Arrow, so we can ensure type classes' integrity over time. Some laws could be identity, associativity, composition, and so on. So let's take a look at the functor laws. Functors satisfy two specific laws, identity and composition. Identity for functor means that mapping over any computational context using the identity function will have no effect. In other words, it will return the same failure wrapped into the same context. For clarification, the identity function is just a function that returns the input value as is. About composition law, it applies the functor in a way that mapping over a type constructor twice with two different functions, f and g, is equivalent to mapping it once using the composition of both functions. If you are creating your own functor instances for your custom data types, you will also need a way to ensure those instances are satisfying the functor laws. You can do it by fetching the arrow test artifact. Once you do this, you can call the law functions over the functor laws object and pass in your functor instance, and the equality instance that you will need to define to provide a way to compare two instances for equality. In this video, we have learned how to map over your data using the functor. In following lessons, we will learn a bit more about different type classes like the applicative or the monad. Thanks for watching.